Welcome to the Line Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review online listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Line Cruisers. And we are doing this in order to identify common issues with the vehicles. Um, we do it to uh, make sure that the sellers of these vehicles are being upfront and disclosing everything. And then, you know, to the extent that we can, we can observe it from the information that they provide. And then we also do it to just inform you, should you, so you can be in a better position, you know, should you buy one of these. So let's go ahead and look at the vehicle that we're going to study today, which is this 1997 uh, FZJ80. So this is an 80 series. The last year that they made it, it's got a cool pinstripe on, I presume, each side. It's got an ARB bumper and yeah, looks looks pretty good. Um, yeah, you know, see some rock chips and yeah, kind of faded paint on that bumper. So you'd expect it had been on there for a while, but yeah, let's go through the details and see what we got. So this is located in Arlington, Virginia. It's got 172,000 miles. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's got um, uh, three or triple locking differentials, dark emerald pearl, green paint, uh, tan interior, ARB front bumper, and four x four labs rear bumper. Um, so four x four labs is kind of one of the yeah you know, one of the better names for these. It's got an old man emu uh, lift kit, uh, scan gauge, um, yeah. Uh, clean Carfax report. Let's see, clean uh, Virginia title in the seller's name, which is good to see. And this doesn't. This does have a reserve. Uh, let's see what else out of the ordinary here. So the seller acquired the truck in July of 2022. Oh my gosh, another flip. And the work performed under current ownership includes replacing the catalytic converter, the air conditioning compressor, the air cleaner assembly. So it's curious why that needed to be replaced. Uh, windshield and rear window gaskets, uh, speedometer shaft sleeve assembly, and the uh, brake front brake pads. The brake front, that's a typo. <laughs> All right, so it's got, yeah, 172,000 miles. So yeah, really low miles for the year. Um, okay, come back. <laughs> uh, let's see, anything else out of the ordinary here? Uh, it's got LED exterior brake and turn signal lights. So it looks like, yeah, they've swapped out the bulbs. Wheel arch extensions. What is that? Okay, uh, the seller states... Um, that the front skid plate was refinished, probably maybe because it was rusty, who knows. And the antenna was replaced in November of 2022. And then in January 2023, that's when they did the windshield and the uh, rear window gaskets. So good to see that that was done. Let's see what else. It's got um, some Cooper ATW tires, matching spare, good to see. Uh, old Man Emu, da, 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 da. Uh, the anti-lock brake sensor O-rings and front stabilizer bar were, were replaced, and the parking brake assembly was serviced in August of 2022, while the front pads were replaced in February of 23. All right, anything else? LED interior lights, weather tech floor mats, Alpine DVD stereo with Bluetooth navigation, and custom door speakers. Uh, the rear seat lock striker, uh, I'm not sure which rear seat, um, was replaced in preparation for the sale, and yeah, so they re in November of 2022, geez, 2022, they replaced the stereo, uh, replaced the glove box hinge and cleaning and lubricating the window channels. Yeah, so lots of maintenance is being described here, all of which is yeah, pretty normal for these, uh, these vehicles as they age. Uh, let's see. And so in that, what, since June of 2022 or whenever, you know, so just under a year, um, they've added 1,200 miles um, yeah, since then. Uh, let's see, more work. So the air cleaner assembly, air conditioning compressor, we've talked about that. Rear exhaust hanger uh, is probably rusted through, I'd assume. And vacuum hoses were replaced and an oil change in 2022. All right, the seller notes the differential and transfer case oils were serviced, the drive line was greased, and the transmission cooler lines were replaced in 2022, while sections of the frame were repainted. And yeah, we talked about the speedometer shaft sleeve assembly. I'm not even sure what that is, but... <laughs> Uh, let's see. So yeah, so there's all the maintenance work. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Carfax. So yeah, last reported mileage was 171. That's commensurate. We've got five owners and yeah, let's go through just the mileage. So originally sold into Maryland. Um, looks like then it was in Virginia. All right. So 54,076, 80. We've got, you know, decent service being marked here. So yeah, not, not too many gaps. Yeah. When I like to purchase a, a vehicle, I go through and yeah, pull all the maintenance records from the Carfax and try and get a sense for like what, you know, what mileages and years I, I don't have records for as far as, um, yeah, as far as, uh, oil changes and whatnot. 
Uh, looks like it failed emissions back in 2008. The GR valve and the system was serviced, or yeah, the valve was replaced and the system was serviced. Anyway, still in Virginia, 114,000 miles. We've got you know brake work happening then, and yep, mileage still climbing up. And then we've got the current owner picking it up in yeah, August or so of 2022. And yeah, there's the mileage that we've got. So it looks like in 2022, it failed the safety inspection. That's probably why some of the things were replaced. You know, maybe it was the bulbs, you know, who knows. Uh, nothing comes up on vehiclehistory.com for this one. Uh, so yeah, no other nuggets there. There is a video, just kind of a quick walk around. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot to be gleaned there, but you know it's good to good to have a video nonetheless. I'm sure we'll see more um, as the auction progresses and people ask for you know demonstration of the lockers and such. All right, so looking at the outside here, uh, I do note that there's lots of like little chips in the paint. I do it looks like uh, there's some wear here on the driver door sill uh, and more chips going on here. I do note that the paint is a little bit different on this fender flare, uh, the back side of it versus the front, or at least from this angle, it looks that way. Um, otherwise it looks pretty good. Not the most, these Coopers, they're not like the, you know, they don't have like the most aggressive tread, but yeah, they look good, nice and tall. Those are 33 inch tires. Yeah, pretty good looking truck. Uh, yeah, good to see this nice, like deep green paint. And you can definitely see, yeah, there's kind of like a color, dif color difference. Uh, it looks like this is the back parts is what's been repainted. doesn't quite match the body. And yeah, maybe that whole rear quarter, I don't know. And sometimes they do like the the little like pinstripes after the fact to kind of hide body work. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Don't They didn't disclose anything. There's this four by four labs rear bumper. Again, those are some of the, the nicer ones. I, I do like, I feel like this little tag that they put on is usually like, it's like stainless steel or something. So I'd assume it's been painted over, but I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, not sure if that's a dent here in this um, this D pillar. Sorry, I'm clicking the wrong buttons here. Yeah, I don't I don't know what that is. Hopefully, we can get a better shot there. But pretty good, pretty good lines. Looks relatively clean body wise. I do note that it looks like this never had the running board, so that's definitely a yeah plus in in my opinion. Yeah, I've always been curious too on these four by four labs and all these other bumpers. I just always presume that they all kind of like end up rusting out, like they don't get paint or powder coat into some of the crevices. And that seems to be the case on this four by four labs bumper. I was hoping that they were better again, not to say like <laughs> better than that, but yeah, I would, I'm still waiting for the, the manufacturer of one of these bumpers to, yeah, to really get a coating uh, that, that lasts for years and years. But again, kind of what's the point if you're just going to, you know, slide it on rocks anyway. But these types of um, areas, you know, they're just always going to crowd and it's going to make it look like crap. But anyway, yeah, looks looks pretty good. Good profile. Um, it's got the right stuff as far as, you yeah, know, the bumpers go. Looks good. Uh, I do note it is a winch bumper. It's just missing the winch. They never installed it. But yeah, lots of like marks. I feel like these are bigger than like rock chips. So there, there must be something else going on with the paint here on the hood. Um, kind of looking beyond this front bar, it seems like the gaps, you know, between the hood and the headlights, as far as I can tell, that all matches. Although a lot of it is being obscured by that, um, by that bumper. Yeah, looking at the back, that all looks fine. Not sure if they're showing off you know, the lenses just to show that they're not, you know, not cracked. Yeah, and you can definitely tell like that sheen and the color difference on the rear part of that fender flare on the driver's side. And then, yeah, confirmation that the paint's been worn getting in and out. All right, so we've got some, you know, we've got some pretty gnarly rust here at the bottom part of the uh, the rocker on the driver's side in the back. Yeah, that's gross. Uh, and then I'm I'm guessing this is like tree sap that's fallen on the paint. Yeah, if you park under a tree, definitely stay on top of that. Yeah, that looks like what that's what it is. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> And it like gets in there and it like dissolves and cracks the uh, the clear coat. So even if you like you know scrape it off, like there's just no no getting rid of that damage once it's there. 
but that you know, kind of pales in comparison to the to the rest. Yeah, so this level of corrosion is about what you'd expect for a vehicle in the Rust Belt. And I know Virginia is, you know, part of the Old South, but yeah, they're really part of the, you know, the Rust Belt <laughs> when it comes uh, in terms of cars. Certain parts of Virginia are better than others, but yeah, it looks like this one was in the, the bad part of Virginia. Um, yeah, it's kind of, a, kind of a shame. I hate seeing vehicles, you know, kind of get all rusty and corroded. Uh, we haven't gotten a detailed shot here on the passenger side of this rear rear quarter um maybe it's not as bad i would like to see the part where it kind of like hooks around uh yeah in order to validate that but yeah it obviously doesn't look as bad as that that driver's side but if that's bad you could also assume that here underneath um yeah at the bottom of the rear quarter panel that it's yeah just almost just as bad too all right, looking at the driver door panel, yeah, it seems like it's all intact. It's got the deflux sticker. It's a good job. <laughs> I don't know if they put a new one on or what, but uh, yeah, not digging the speaker grill, but I understand people like their tunes, missing the cover for the fuse panel. Um, you can see something else that's probably the scan gauge that's plugged in. You can see the triple locker switch there, or the double locker for that matter. Um, condition of the passenger side door card, yeah, it looks about the same. Just note some minor scratches. Um, photos are yeah pretty far out. It's hard to tell what's going on. Um, but I do note that the courtesy lights are on. At least all those see a little corrosion on these fasteners. That's very common for yeah vehicles that have been in a rust state. And then I also note that the um, yeah the speakers have been replaced here on the door cards. Nets are sagging as you, as you would expect on pretty much all of these. Looks like one of the arms on this speaker grill has been broken off. That's why you don't do stuff like this. It's like it just. Hmm. Find something more durable. It's it's this balance, like every everything that's aftermarket, right, that wasn't done by the OEM, whether it's Toyota or Honda or you know, even like the you know, the Ford vehicles, like nobody does it as good as the OEM. <laughs> so I wouldn't expect whoever makes this, you know, cheap plastic cover for the speaker to yeah, to have it be as as good, low profile, as tight, whatever, as yeah, the original equipment manufacturer. All right, looking at the door card, we already saw, oh, this is the rear one. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, looks like maybe, I was going to say maybe a bolt's missing down there, but yeah, never mind. All right, and let's just go ahead and look at all the photos all at once. All right, courtesy light was on there. Yeah, just some light, light scratches. I do see a VIN sticker there. Don't see one on this door, but that's at the front. I think we missed that. Let's go back. Yeah, so I see a VIN sticker there on the driver door. Uh, let's see. Can we see one on the passenger door? Yep, yeah, there it is. Just missed those in the photos. Slight discoloration on the bottom of the carpet. That's pretty normal. All right, moving to the driver's seat. Leather seems to be in pretty good shape given the, uh, yeah, the year and the mileage. Uh, a little bit of wear on the second row. These photos for bring a trailer are surprisingly like kind of out of order and kind of all over the place. Usually bring a trailer is a little bit, you know, has a little bit better flow. Um, oh, the cover for the fuse panel isn't missing. Looks like it's there in that photo. Um, steering wheel wear is yeah pretty pretty normal for the year and the mileage. Uh, you can see that aftermarket stereo, pretty gnarly scratches on the on the glove box. Some wires hanging down. Not quite sure what those are or for. And I note that the gasket between the center console pieces is missing, which uh, tremendously disappoints me. <laughs> Shifter handle leather looks good. And yeah, these, yeah, the seats are holding up okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the leather's pretty gnarly here on the steering wheel, but you know, it's it's fine. I'd rather, you know, I don't know how everybody is, but I'd rather it be like this than. Yeah, I have one of those like nasty covers on it. I don't know what it is. Those covers just drive me nuts. All right, but 172,271. Uh, it's, uh, what's that, an onomatopoeia or whatever when it reads forward the same as it does backwards. I'm a little disappointed that they didn't time it such that, yeah, what was here on the trip meter matched or was also an onomatopoeia. <laughs> yeah, nothing too noteworthy. You do see some like minor, like a, a scratch or a crack here on this part of the dash didn't see one it's hard to tell on the um where we normally see them on top of the instrument cluster looks like it's, it's got the 3d printed little insert there for a uh, for a cup holder 
Uh, headliner looks gross. Yeah, some staining, some weird scratches. Maybe it's just the contrast of the photos. Not quite sure what, what's going on there. Um, random twig <laughs> on, on the floor mat. How do you take that picture with the, with, with that in there? Get, get rid of it. Um, I do see some marks kind of blurred here on the bottom part of the dash. Uh, and then this cable, I think, is for the scan gauge. I think I saw it on top of the dash on the driver's side. Rear carpet looks pretty good. Moving to the rear cargo area, tailgate carpet looks nice. I see a VIN sticker on the um, the upper hatch. And we talk a lot about how this handle up on the upper hatch is a telltale for the corrosion situation of the truck. I do from this distance and with it being blurred, I do note some corrosion there. That's enough for me to walk away, but um, you know, some people might not be uh, concerned with that. But yeah, it looks relatively well put together. It's good to see, I'd assume there's like a light on the license plate, but good to see that mounted there. Let's get this cargo mat out of the way. If the cargo mat's not functional with the seats, you'd have to cut the holes in it in order for these uh, seats to latch into it. And then you know, we've got some stains in the carpet underneath. I feel like this bolt here that secures, like that doesn't look the way it should. Um, remember, this is one that like mounts all the way through the floor, so it's very common for that to probably get rusty and gross. But I feel like that's not totally the way it should be and these nubs here I, they should be um like seat color they should kind of be tan i don't think they should be black all right moving to the engine bay um i do know earlier the vin sticker on this near ground um fender i can see one here uh on the passenger side um can see you know some corrosion on you know the aluminum and the other pieces here under the hood kind of a dirty engine bay but you know you can see also another good telltale for corrosion are the brackets here on the front on the core, um, the radiator core support. So you can see here by the horns, yeah, that's pretty gross. And yeah, some of the other parts are a little rusty. But relatively well put together uh, engine bay. Seems like everything's in place and where it should be. All right, moving to the undercarriage. It looks like some work's been done, you know, paint wise. Uh, they did mention that this little skid plate has been. Uh, painted looks like that's the case you can see maybe spots where they could easily get paint here on the bottom part of the frame that's been addressed but here on the top where it's a little bit harder it looks like you know that's that's kind of yeah uh showing the corrosion uh similarly the axle looks great um hopefully in some of these nooks and crannies like on the spring perches yeah those were treated well but the wipers on the burr fields look good don't see any um you know, don't see any drips uh you know, new hardware for the um, for the front differential uh, drain or fill plug. That's a good good touch. Uh, we talked earlier how this driver side rear rocker is really you know really rusted out. This passenger side doesn't look so bad. Doesn't look bad at all for that matter. And you can see the new exhaust that's been installed. But yeah, it looks like the the frame's been yeah worked on and and coated with something. Hard to tell if. This looks like overspray, so it, I mean, it could be that they yeah, wire wheeled it and then yeah, put some spray paint on it. But hopefully it was done well. But you know, normally when we talk about you know corrosion on the frame, you know, usually you can see some like deep pitting. I, I don't really see much of that. Um, you know, looking inside here, like this uh, lower control arm mount, I mean you can see a little bit of corrosion. Yeah. But it doesn't look it doesn't look too severe. But yeah, this rocker panel that's yeah just above out of the photo, yeah, that's that's what you need to worry about. All right, you got the keys, you got a factory service manual. Uh, I can't remember, I think for this year it was all in one manual, but as you went into the 100 series, it yeah, spilled over into multiple manuals. Lots of maintenance receipts, good to see. Um, yep, yeah, some receipts and so on. You can go through those on your own time. There's the sticker for the hood. Interesting. So yeah, on the hundred series, this sticker went to the other side. So it's on the it's on the passenger side. Whereas for this 80, it's here on the driver's side. But good for them to provide the VIN stickers here. I think we've pretty much noted all of these. Uh, we didn't see the ones on the hatch, so it's good to see on the lower hatch, so it's good to see those. And we also didn't see them here. 
on the uh, rear quarters. Uh, looking at the sticker, just to confirm it's a locked vehicle, seeing K294, that's what you want to see. So it looks like it was factory locked. All right, yeah, pretty good looking truck. Um, over the last couple uh, auction predictions on price, I've, I've been off quite a bit. Uh, I think there's two things at play here. I think one of them is that the market's continuing to like decline. So, you know, things aren't fetching what they have fetched recently. Um, I think the other part of it is that like there are aberrations to auction values. There are some that for whatever reason, they just like get bit up. So for instance, there was, um, you know, there was a white 80, uh, I think it was a 96 or 97, you know, late model in central California that, went to 16,000, whereas like there was a green one also from California that, you know, kind of the same year, same mileage went for like 20 grand. And the white one was far better in like every way. So I think there's like aberrations, but overall I think things are like trending downward. So I'm gonna try and be a little bit more conservative and, and course correct in my predictions. Um, I think the rest is gonna be a real detriment on this one. I think it's relatively well put together. Obviously a lot of money has been spent on it, but yeah, it's no cream puff. This would make a great trail, you know, vehicle, good, good, you know, good truck to actually go have fun with. Um, and you know, I think the price will, will kind of show that. So I, I think maybe, you know, like 22 grand, 22, 500, I think that's a good price for this. You know, the mileage is really low, but yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of paid the price for, for living in Virginia and Maryland its whole life and, you know, sitting under a tree with tree sap. So yeah, my thoughts, 22,500 and yeah, I'm going to stick to it this time. <laughs> anyway, well, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Take care.